Hello everybody, sorry I haven't made any videos and also sorry that the audio probably sounds a bit more echoey because this is the only room I can record this in. I'm in Weymouth right now on holiday um, and therefore I haven't really been able to do any videos. Uh, I've been working on something, something which requires more editing than usual and basically because of that it's me meant I've had stuff to do but I just haven't really been able to record things. Um, so, you know, that's that's that, basically. But I, I thought I should do something because I, I... Well, one, uh, I'm not one of those people who can kind of just, like, go on holiday and not do anything. Um, I need to do things. And I'm, like, by the sea, and it's nice, and there's a beach, and it's super boiling hot, you know, April. <laughs> um, but I, I still felt like I should talk about something, and I heard this whole thing, so I'll admit I'm kind of out of the loop here. Apparently there is a court case involving Maya Force data. Uh, I feel like, I don't know, I should have heard about this, but I, I didn't. But what I did hear is that apparently Simone de Beauvoir is being used out of context, specifically the line, one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. And this is a line which transgender uh, ideologists, gender identity extremists, like to butcher all the time. Now, admittedly, I haven't read Second Sex in a while. I'm sort of just going from memory here. Uh, and it's possible that I am uh, missing something, that there is even more wrong with this that I'm not going to cover. Uh, and if that's the case, and you've maybe read uh, Second Sex, and also some of the Simone de Beauvoir's other stuff, I guess, uh, more recently, then you can kind of chime in in the comment section and say like, hey, you know, here's another reason why this is wrong. But I really just wanted to kind of cover uh, two key things that this relates to. The the first one is that um, you you have to bear in mind when Simone de Beauvoir says that. The first thing is that Simone de Beauvoir kind of starts off the second sex by talking about how there is woman is conceived of in two senses. And basically she talks about this kind of contradictory attitude where people will have a, an innate understanding that a woman is purely a materialistic characterization. Uh, and yet at the same time, they will also attach to being a woman all of these uh, standards of femininity. Um, basically she points out that people will say like, oh, you know, there's, there's not really any real women anymore. Um, and, you know, like people aren't behaving like women and she's saying, well, well, what is a woman then? You know, because it seems like these people think that there are this like category of people who should be behaving like women, uh, you know, based on their material reality. But then at the same time, they say these people aren't behaving like women. Basically, the whole point is to kind of problematize this idea of behaving like or, or feeling like or acting like a woman. Uh, because she's saying, well, how does that work? That's, that's basically kind of what she's saying. She's pointing out like that the, the woman is being used in these two senses. Uh, now, immediately, you should notice that this is something which it, it's kind of hilarious that anyone would try to use this to back up uh, the kind of gender identity extremist understanding of being a man or a woman. Um, because first of all, uh, a gender identity extremist would not acknowledge any degree uh, or any sense of being a man or a woman being a uh, material thing. That's uh, problem one. A and second of all, a, a gender identity extremist would not consider there to be anything uh, incoherent or suspect about having this nebulous, weird, mystical understanding of what it means to be a woman, which is precisely what um, Simone de Beauvoir is criticizing. She's saying, look, it doesn't make sense to talk about whether or not somebody is uh, a woman uh, in terms of anything other than just basic material reality. Uh, and she's pointing out how illogical it is for people to have, on the one hand, a clear understanding that there are this group of people who exist, you know, the second sex, women. Um, and <laughs> I mean, apart from anything else, just the book is called The Second Sex. Um, that's kind of your indication right there. But you know, that there is this, you know, biological material reality sex group called women. And that this group at the same time is is confronting this, this claim by basically anti-feminist, by people who believe in traditional gender roles, that there aren't any real women anymore. Uh, and she's basically saying that doesn't make any sense. Uh, so immediately, like the idea that this is something which um, 
as somebody who who believes in this idea of feeling like a woman or having a woman essence uh, independent of material reality, the idea that anyone would be kind of saying, yeah, this is what it's talking about, um, seems very strange to me. Uh, now, the other thing, when she's talking about one becomes a woman, therefore, she's speaking specifically with reference to this uh, kind of second category of being a woman, this kind of nonsense, uh, mystical understanding of, of womanness, which she previously critiqued. So she's saying basically what she's doing is she's acknowledging that when we live in a society, um, how these categories are perceived is going to be relevant to people, you know, and that therefore, if you are a woman based on material biological reality, then inevitably, uh, you're, you're going to find that your existence, insofar as it does not line up with uh, this sort of stereotypical uh, gender wrong nonsense, uh, it is going to feel in some way inauthentic, depending on to what extent the society you live in is, is sexist. So obviously, if you live in a really sexist society, it's going to feel really inauthentic. If you live in a slightly more liberal society, it might feel a little bit less um, inauthentic. And that's basically what, what she's getting at. And she's therefore, when she's talking about becoming a woman, She's talking about becoming a woman according to the kind of gross sexist ideas that society has about what it means to be a woman. I, I don't know which order to what to address first in terms of how stupid it is, but I think I'll address one is that you should immediately realize the problem here, which is that, um, and I, this is, I don't know, I almost want to end on this because I think it's like the worst thing, but I think I'll just, you know, it'll kind of be like a, a, a terrible, horrible sandwich with the worst thing in the middle. Um, you should immediately recognize that Simone de, Simone de Beauvoir is essentially identifying this as a bad thing. You know, when she says one becomes a woman, she's not saying that in a sense of like, this isn't like an empowering message. She's not saying like, oh, you become a woman. You know, you go, go, you, you go out there and you get that woman energy, that woman essence. You go out there and you pick it up. No, she's not saying that. She's basically saying that one through the um, force of society sexism, comes to view the material basis for their womanhood as inauthentic and uh, starts to characterize their womanness in terms of femininity. And in that sense, one becomes a woman. Um, so she's, it's basically kind of a, a cynical way of showing how when you have categories like man and woman being defined in you know sexist ways that don't reflect the actual human condition of existing in material reality, uh, it, people have to kind of force themselves into those roles. So again, it's really funny that these people are out there saying, yes, this is this is empowering. This is, oh, I'm so valid. Because Simone de Beauvoir said, I become a woman. Uh, yeah, that's that's not what she's saying. Um, and, and we know that's not what she's saying. And this is the, the kind of third thing, uh, the second part of this thing. Uh, because she then goes on to describe... The in in I can't remember what part it is, but she dedicates several chapters to it. Describe the experience of growing up as a woman, and I can't again like this is this is showing how little I kind of remember about the book, uh, apart from just like the main central kind of thesis. Um, but either before or after that, she also describes the uh, historical reality of like how woman as a category has developed. But first of all, let's just focus on the the first thing. Um, she describes the experience of growing up as a woman, and she's constantly relating it to the material reality of biological sex. And what she's talking about, like very obviously in those in that part of the book about like the experience of growing up as a woman, is how that experience of growing up as a woman causes you to experience these um, kind of obligation, this obligation to manifest your womanness in terms of femininity. And that's what she's talking about, like in that section, very obviously. So first of all, you have the fact that what she's describing here isn't a good thing. She's not like saying, again, like this isn't like an empowering message to show how valid trans people are. Um, so yeah, it's not supposed to be a good thing. She's just describing the reality of what it is to be a woman, that you, you feel yourself in an effort to authenticate your womanhood, you adopt femininity. That's what she's talking about. And she's describing kind of reality here. She's not saying like, this is a good thing. She's not saying she endorses this. Uh, and I do think this is something, Jesus Christ, what is that noise? I'm just going to power through. <laughs> um, and I think this is like a problem that a lot of kind of gender identity streamers have. They don't understand like reality uh, and particularly the difference between reality and what you want. 
So I think a lot of the time they just assume when somebody describes reality in their view, that translates to them describing kind of the, their worldview of how things should be. So they think when Simone de Beauvoir says one does not, uh, one is not born, but rather becomes a woman, they think that she's like saying, oh, this is what I believe. And isn't it this fantastic thing? Um, and obviously that that's not true. And, you know, I think it's a similar thing when, you know, obviously people say that they believe in material reality and they define the categories of man and woman based on material reality. People seem to think they're saying like that that's how they want the world to be. And they go, oh, you want the world, like you want these people put in these boxes. And it's like, no, that's not what I want exactly. It's just how the world is. And and here it's Simone de Beauvoir is describing reality, the reality of what the experience of kind of growing up as a woman is. And these people are thinking that it's Simone de Beauvoir setting up this framework to give them some sort of, uh, you know, doorway, pathway into declaring themselves to be authentically women. And I just think that's kind of a, a funny thing that, again, seem to think whenever they hear a kind of a analysis of reality, they think that what they're hearing or what they're being exposed to is, in fact, a, um, a justification for a, a series of claims they want to make. And they always try and kind of rework analysis of reality into this justification for how they want reality to be. But the second thing is, aside from the fact that Simone de Beauvoir is not describing this as a good thing, is the fact that she, like, based on the fact she is talking about the experience of growing up as a, a girl, uh, growing up female, she, you know, when she's talking about this, like, you just look at the book. The book is talking about the experience of growing up as a female in a female body and how that um, association uh, how, how like the ideas of femininity are built upon the idea of womanhood, which is itself built upon the idea uh, or the material reality, but you know obviously material reality can be conceptualized as ideas of femaleness. Um, th that's what she's talking about. Like you, you can't, you can't get to the conclusion of you become a woman without starting at the cornerstone that, or, or the kind of um, foundation that Simone de Beauvoir sets herself, which is material biological reality. Uh, the material biological reality of being a female so that like it, it's not talking about a man or a biological male growing up and then thinking oh you know what i reckon i'm a woman that's not what she's talking about when she says one becomes a woman anyway yeah the final thing i wanted to say is just that when you read what simone beauvoir had to say about I'll tell you what look at this it's really kind of reflecting off um this when you read what simone beauvoir had to say about um history, the history of women, and how, how this idea of kind of, well, patriarchy came to be established, she does so, again, with reference to material biological reality. And it's kind of just like, you can't have the feminist analysis. Like, it, it's not a matter of debating whether or not what Simone de Beauvoir says validates transgender identity. Because obviously, Simone de Beauvoir, she wouldn't have any idea about, like, the, the things that Judith Butler and people like that would come up with in the, in the 90s. Um, you know... She, she wouldn't know about the LGBTQIA plus whatever uh, notion. Obviously, the idea of transsexualism existed then, but this kind of uh, metaphysics of, of like female and male or, or man and woman essences and people being men in women's bodies uh, was, uh, I think, pretty much non-existent and certainly not as pervasive as it is now. So talking about how Simone de Beauvoir would have reacted to that, I think is just kind of silly. Um, but the, the key thing is, you don't even have to get into that discussion because every single bit of the analysis that Simone de Beauvoir did does not work if woman is not based in biological reality. Because you read what she had to say about hist history, you read what she had to say about the uh, experience of growing up as a woman, it all relates to biological material reality. But of course, this isn't a shock because you can't have any sort of feminist analysis if the category of woman doesn't mean anything. So, you know, pointing out that Simone de Beauvoir's feminist analysis doesn't work if you just say woman is just a feeling in your head. Well, that kind of applies across the board to all feminist analysis. So unsurprisingly, you know, when you've got a movement which fundamentally would completely invalidate all feminist analysis, would make feminist analysis impossible, turns out when they're trying to use a part of feminist analysis to validate their own theories that they've kind of made up, uh, they completely butcher it and get it wrong. Anyway, please do like and subscribe and again, comment below to let me know what you think and share this if you think people will be interested. Um, do I have anything else to say? Uh, 
did I say give on Patreon? That's good. I mean, obviously, I kind of feel a bit uh, saying that because I haven't uploaded recently. And usually, like, when I'm giving on Patreon, I'm, it's because I'm, like, working quite hard on my videos. So I'm like, hey, guys, you know, I'm working quite hard. So it's it's nice to get some money from that. Right now, I'm obviously, I haven't been doing as much stuff. So whatever. But if you do want to give on Patreon, you know, I'll try to get more regular uploads going forward. Uh, but I'll just say right now, thank you to my current patrons. Kirsten, Stephen, Nancy, Rubble, Lizu, Jessica, Constant, Adriana, Harper, Alex, Lyca, Jane, George, Katie, Ryan, Vishnuvia, Snap Feminist, Lily, Emily, Federico, A, Evan, Anna, Sophie, Jamie, Lena, Julie, Dustin, Rashmi, Marion, BJ, Joshua, Marina, Sam, Sarah, Valerie, Kathleen, Jelena, M, Dork, Alexandra, Owen, Sarah, Ibishka, Chris, Clara, Amy, Gifke, Sarah, Corey, Aaron, Karen. You're all very appreciated.